Let's say we were given the equation of a plane in space, and let's say we were given some point that was not in the plane, and we want to find the distance between this plane and this point. Now, one thing that, that seems kind of obvious when you think about it, but we should probably clarify this, is when we say a distance from a point to a plane, we, we mean the shortest distance possible because somebody could be, you know, kind of kind of a smart aleck about it and say, well, well, there's actually lots of different distances to this plane, depending on what point you take in the plane to measure from our point Q right here. Um, it's, it's just like if you were measuring, you know, the distance from, you know, like my pen to the floor here. I obviously mean the, the distance from the pen immediately or directly to the floor, not to some point on the floor way, way over there. I'm talking about the shortest distance, obviously. So how, how do we compute this distance here? Well, it's not as obvious as you would think. Um, you, you would think, oh, it's a distance, we'll just use distance formula or something like that. We're already given the point Q, but here's the, here's the um, I guess, the, the difficult part or the, the frustrating part is I don't know where in the plane the point would be that would be closest to Q. And unfortunately, there's not a clear, easy way of finding that point there. So unfortunately, I can't just use the distance formula because I don't have two points. I only have point Q, and then I have the entire plane here. But actually, somebody came up with a pretty clever idea for how to still find this distance. You'll remember that when you're given the equation of the plane, one thing you can easily see is a point in the plane. Now, you can't just take that point and take the distance from P to Q because that might not be the shortest distance, but it'll help in, in just a minute. So just, just bear with me for a minute. I can tell a point in the plane. And then from the equation, I can also read off the normal vector to the plane. You'll probably remember that from one of our one of our earlier videos. And we're going to use these two things to our advantage. So, so here's what we're going to do. Here's the, the clever idea that someone came up with. Um, if you know a point in the plane, and obviously you're given the point Q, you can easily create a vector from P to Q. Right? From P to Q. So I'll draw that vector here. So there's our vector P to Q. And then you also have this normal vector to the plane as well, which can be drawn anywhere. So I'll start it at point P just because I want to, because uh, it can really have this initial point anywhere. Um, you can move a vector anywhere in space that you want to, as long as it has the correct magnitude and direction. And then here's, here's the key step. Here's the clever, the clever step right here. What we're gonna do is we're going to project, do you remember projections? We're gonna project PQ onto the normal vector. We had a bunch of videos on projections a little while ago. And if we project PQ onto N, then it'll look something like this. It'll come out just as high as Q goes, but it'll be under point P here. You remember we talked about leaving a shadow on vector N. So this green vector that I'm drawing right here, this would be the projection, I'll write that as P-R-O-J, the projection of P-Q onto vector N. And so notice, if you want the distance here, this distance D, notice that's the exact same thing as this guy's distance. If I can compute the projection's magnitude, we're done. That's the distance I'm looking for. All I've really basically done is kind of shifted the situation to be above P, which is which I know is in the plane, rather than be above some mystery point in the plane right here. But this this green vector's magnitude also has that that distance d there. All right, so let's let's see how the math plays out. Let's let's see what we can do here. All right, so first of all, what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to find the projection, the projection of PQ on to vector n. That's what I want to do. Find PQ and then project it on to vector n. Um, there is a formula for the projection, which um, I'll remind you of. You're going to take, uh, for a scalar, you're going to take PQ dot n divided by the magnitude of n squared times vector n. 
let me just remind you just some of the basics about that. If you're projecting a vector onto vector n, it's either going to be shorter than n or longer than n, but it will be in the direction of n, no doubt. Um, and so all we're doing is we're taking a scalar multiple. Notice all of this stuff is a scalar, a scalar multiple of vector n. And how do I know this is a scalar? Well, it has a dot product, which yields a scalar, and a magnitude, which also yields a scalar. So this is the appropriate scalar. Now, I can actually do you one better than that. This isn't even technically what I want. The projection is a new vector. If I want the distance, what do I actually want? I want this guy's magnitude. That's actually what I want. So let me take this a step farther. What I really want is this guy's magnitude. I want, it, I want the magnitude of this vector. So here we go. The distance that I'm looking for will be the magnitude of the projection of PQ onto vector n. And now, how do you do that mathematically, though? Well, check this out. The PQ dot n over the magnitude of n squared, all that stuff, all that is a scalar, and scalars can be pulled outside of norms. Now, we do need absolute values to make sure that it's not negative, but other than that, it's fine. So we'll take the absolute value of PQ dot n divided by the magnitude of n squared times, and what's left over is simply the magnitude of this guy, the magnitude of n. But notice now you have a common factor of the magnitude of n in the numerator and denominator. And so your, your final result, and this is the one I would commit to memory if I were you, so you might want to put this on a flash card or something to help you remember it, the distance d here is going to be the absolute value of pq dot n divided by just the magnitude of n, not the magnitude of n squared, because one of these factors canceled. So this is kind of like your magic formula right here. So to summarize what just happened here is if they give you a plane and they give you a point Q, here's what you're going to do. Step one is you're going to find very quickly a point in your plane. It's very easy to do. We'll call that point P. Then you're going to create a vector from P to Q. So that's, that's PQ. From the equation of the plane, you can also quickly read off the normal vector. That's immediate and it's obvious. So that's your vector N. Then once you have created your vector PQ and you've got your vector N, you're going to take their dot product. Make sure that your result's positive because it might be negative. So take the absolute value if, it's, if it is negative and divide that by the magnitude of your vector n. And that formula right there will give you the distance, the shortest distance from your point Q to your plane. Now I know this video had tons of theory in it. We didn't actually do an example. We'll actually work through a, a real example of this coming up in the next video.